I'm going to go through the steps of programming a couple of UV82 radios for a simplex with dual watch. For clarity, I'll use a project as a focus. That is, a theoretical amateur club just received a call from the local fairgrounds officials indicating that they would like to have amateur communications during the fair for public service communications. For simplicity's sake, I'll program a two-channel network. One channel as an administrative channel for the head amateurs who are in charge of the project, and a second channel for the majority of the public service communications traffic. I'm going to program these radios with the Chirp software program, and I'll start right here on the memory page. Checking, first of all, my memory range. The range is 0 to 1. It could be as much as 0 to 127. I only have a, uh, two channels that I'm using, so 0 to 1 is just fine. I'll leave that as is. So I'll go ahead and program the frequency on the first channel, and that will be 146.550 with the name of admin. The tone mode I'm going to use is tone squelch, which, al which allows me to use t uh, CTCSS tones both transmit and receive. I'm going to choose a 91.5 tone for my CTCSS on the transmit and also on the receive. I'm not going to use digital squelch. These will remain. I'm not using cross mode. That can remain. Duplex is set to none, which is what I want, but just to give you a look, you have these other choices. None is simplex, so I'll just keep that. Offset is zero. Uh, I'm going to use narrowband FM, 12.5 kilohertz. And because the fair, this theoretical fairgrounds is only 30 acres, I'm going to use low power. I could go to high power, but I'm going to use low. Second channel is 446.025. I'll call it the public service, public service channel. It also gets tone squelch. I'm going to give it a uh, 103.5 for the heck of it and also a 103.5. No real reason I just picked that number. These are all the same. Duplex will be none which is simplex. The offset will be a zero, because simplex has no offset. Let's see if we can fix this. Okay, so we have uh, zero. It's on narrow banded FM, and it's on low power, so that's good. But that's all the programming that goes on on the memory range for our theoretical fairgrounds network. Now to program the basic settings. For that, I'll go to settings, basic settings. It's already there. Carrier squelch, I'm going to set that at five in the middle just to be more comfortable with it. Battery saver, 1.3. If it's good enough for bow funk, it's good enough for me. Backlight timer, five seconds. That's good enough. I'm going to disable the beep. I'll leave the timeout timer at 60 seconds in case somebody keys up and and disables the channel. It'll kill the radio until they figure out what they've done. I'm going to leave display mode A and B on frequency. That's what will display on the radio. I, put, I could put names there with, with just two channels, admin and uh, uh, PSC, but I'm just leaving it at frequency because this is a ham channel and they know about frequencies. Roger beep, I'm taking that one out, and the Roger beep receive, I'm also taking that one out, so no Roger beep. And that's all the programming on the basic settings. Programming the advanced settings. I clicked on that, got this screen. And we'll start off with Vox sensitivity. We're not using Vox, so we'll leave that off. We are using dual watch, so we'll leave that enabled. I've chosen to use the B channel for the dual watch TX priority. That will become clear in a, in a, later in this video. Leaving that on tone, leaving that on English. I'm not going to be scanning, so this one does, is irrelevant. 
I've enabled a busy channel lockout so uh, operators can't talk over one another if they get excited uh, it'll disable their radio and they won't be able to transmit until the channel becomes clear um, I've disabled the, the broadcast FM radio don't need that and the rest and uh, Squirrel's Tail Eliminate is good. It cuts down the noise along with this. And I'm not going to fool with the reset or the, any of the menus. Leave those enabled. And that's it for the advanced settings. Programming the other settings. Clicked on other settings. Got this screen. This screen really doesn't have much to do with the project I'm working on. It mostly has stuff to do with the VF, VF, VFO and the range on the on the VFO, VHF, and UHF. There's one thing I can change here if I wanted to, and I'll just do it for the heck of it. And I'll change the welcome sign, which, which appears when you first turn on the radio, to a fictitious ham call, KX6XXX. And that's all that can be done for the other settings. Programming the work mode settings. I'm clicking on the work mode settings. I got this screen. The first setting is called display. It has two choices, A or B. I worked with these radios for two or three hours trying to figure out what this was. I can't see any behavioral difference between A or B. So I'm just going to leave it on A. I have no idea what that one does. VFO memory mode. This is identical as if you have your radio turned off. You depress the menu button on the front of the radio, turn it on, and it toggles the radio mode from channel to frequency or frequency to channel each time you, you perform that. So I'm going to leave that on the channel mode, which only which means when I first turn these radios on after programming, they will come up in the channel mode. Now, as this is a real project, even though theoretical, and we want people to be online and not screwing around working DX on the remote repeater and the remote uh, uh, HF station, I am going to in, enable the keypad lock. So these radios will come pre-programmed and not available for any kind of change. The memory A channel and the memory B channel selections. These are important with the dual watch because you want to put the one frequency that you want to be watching without uh, it rotating off to any other frequencies on a scan or whatever or a manual selection you want to lock it into your dual watch channel display in my case I'm using the MRA, ch the MRA channel display as the dual watch and I'm putting the administration channel which is located in memory cell number 1 446.025 into that uh, memory A, a channel, the memory A display on the B display, I'm going to put my other frequency. I could put a multitude of frequencies, but I'm only dealing with two, so I'm going to put just the one, which is zero, my public service channel, or 146.550, and I'll place it in B. And, of course, these have these inputs have the selection all the way up to 100, from 0 to 127. The rest of these selections have to do with the VFO, but the VFO is not accessible through the keyboard in this case because I've locked the keyboard. So these can all remain as they are. They're all fine as is. And that completes the programming on the work mode settings. Here's the UV8200 after uploading the configuration that I just built up. And I'll just run through with the screen for a second. Next to the battery symbol, we have a little lock symbol. That's because I locked the screen. N for narrow band, S for the dual watch feature, L for low power, and CT for the uh, CTCSS application. And it shows here that memory cell 1 right there is in the A position of the display, and memory cell 0, 146.550, is on the B cell. Okay, if uh, this radio receives the B frequency in, it'll appear 
like that, the screen will go blue in my case, and the little uh, tri down triangle will pulsate back and forth to show that a signal is coming in. If somebody transmits on the A channel, 446.025, the upper, the upper screen will come in. These radios are a little peculiar in that they don't really uh, do a scan with a priority type operation. It only has one receiver in it and so what the radio is doing is continuously looking back and forth between this, these two frequencies until something shows up. So if one of them shows up, like right now the 146.550 showed up, it no longer is listening to the, to the A side. It only has the one receiver and it's busy. And so if that one drops and there's something on the B side, on the A side rather, well it'll come in and now suddenly this one is active on the receiver. There we go, you've got signal up here, you can see that. And got a audio cut through there. The other thing worth noting about these radios is the uh, the keying button, which you probably know already, it's got an A side and a B side. So if my A side happens to be the 446.025 and I key that, well then obviously the 446.25 on the other radio comes up. If I key the B side, then it brings up the B frequency and it will come up. Okay, so this radio is programmed up on my fairground scheme. The uh, interesting part is you're going to hear one receiver or the other so if somebody on we'll call this a low priority channel starts talking and somebody calls you on the high priority channel you're not going to hear it and it's not going to go back and do a priority quick scan to see if that channel is active and pop over to it it will stay unheard by you as long as this channel keeps talking and the inverse is true too if this one starts talking forever you won't hear this channel pop up until these guys drop and you, you have the possibility of, of talking on one and the other is talking and when, when you drop the uh, suddenly you find yourself on the wrong channel and um, it's just the way this dual watch thing programs up In retrospect, I probably would have programmed these radios differently had it been a real project with real people. Uh, I'm not totally crazy about how the dual watch uh, allows people to be offline at times if the wrong channel is, is active and the channel they desire is not. Um, so I probably would have programmed two channels in a standard simplex mode, maybe with a scanning function, although I think the scanning function is there all the time anyway. so. I hope uh, you enjoyed this uh, video and that it was helpful and I enjoyed making it and I also learned a lot doing it. That's all from here.